Hello everyone, it's Dawn from TwiceYourCheap.com and this week we are talking about Ravelry, which is this amazing website for finding all of these patterns and finding community and groups and clubs and everything on the internet for fiber lovers. So here's a true story. I have recorded this video four times now. <laughs> and have had all sorts of just awful tech issues along the way. So here's hoping that we've got lucky number five now and that we can get this going for you all. If you're not familiar with Ravelry, just go to Ravelry.com and it will take you to this page. If you can click right here to join now. It's free and it's super quick. Enter your email address right here and click this button and they'll send you a link that you will need to click and come back to the website so that you can set up your profile. I already have a profile and like I said, I have done this video four times now, so apparently now I have four profiles. So we're just gonna skip all of that and I will log in using my login. If you are logged in, it's going to take you here to this main page if you have just set up your account, it's gonna take you to a different page where it's gonna walk you through the features of Ravelry just a little bit. After you're done with that, you can click this Ravelry button up here at the top and it will take you here to this home page. What I'm gonna walk you through today, so I've been a member of Ravelry since, pretty much since the beginning. I remember when they were first starting the website so I'm gonna show you my favorite parts of the website, and we're gonna start with the My Notebook section. The My Notebook section is kind of like your home, your house, your bedroom, your own private studio on this wonder in this wonderful neighborhood called Ravelry. And when you click on the My Notebook, it's gonna take you immediately to the projects. And this is kind of your home base this is where you can input the projects that you are have been working on. And so you can input them as you're working on them. See, it's got this little work in progress thing in the corner here. And that way you can keep track of as you're knitting. If you happen to set it aside and you don't remember what needle size you are using or what yarn you are using, you've got it all listed in here. You've also got your notes section where you can add some additional information if you had a problem on row 75 or if you made a change and switched from a size large in the bust to a size small in the waist or vice versa, then you can make that note in here and you've always got it. It's kind of like a little scrapbook of your project. You can take work in progress photos and add them up here. You can also um, update your progress on how far you have gotten in it until you're 100%, and then you change your progress into finished. Or if you decide that, you know, you're probably not gonna knit on this in a while, you can put it in hiberna hi hibernation. I will admit I have quite a few projects in hibernation. Or you could say, you know what, I didn't like this at all and I have frogged it. You've even got a little smiley face thing to say how much you liked it or didn't like it. Most of my projects I have liked. I don't tend to finish them if I don't, but you have that option. You can also say who you made it for if you gave it as a gift. So you've always got this record and this log of what you have done, which is kind of nice because you can take a visual look back at what you've been doing and how your knitting has progressed, and that's always good. As always, Ravelry has lots of ways to organize your projects and little buttons to filter. Feel free to kind of click on those and see how, see if you need them. I personally don't have that many projects in here at the moment, so I don't really need to use a lot of filters. I can just scroll down and find it but we will move on to the other sections. There's a hand spun section here. So just like with your um, projects, you can also enter your yarns that you, have, that you have spun, and then you can add it as a spinning project or move it to your stash, et cetera, et cetera, because you know, hand spun yarn is a project in and of itself. All right, with the stash here is part of where Ravelry gets really amazing. 
Now this is kind of a type A section. If you don't tend to be um, the kind of person who likes to put everything in little folders and with nice little labels, I understand um, that in, in the fiber stash section, it lets you put all of your yarn in here that you currently have in your house, in a bin somewhere. I These are old um, things, so I had taken a photograph of them and added them in here. Um, but you can also choose to use a, a photograph from the yarn manufacturer when you add it in here. You can add, you can say where you purchased it, the name of the yarn, the color, etc., which is really nice. Now, the reason why you might want to put things into your stash is because one, you've got a nice visual kind of catalog of what you have in your house. So you can go shopping in your own house as opposed to in the yarn store. I know it's not quite as much fun, but it doesn't cost as much money as shopping at the yarn store every time. And you can utilize Ravelry's incredible algorithm to be able to sort through and filter patterns uh, based on what yarn you currently have at home. So if you find a pattern that you love and you want to knit it up, you can ask Ravelry, what yarns do I currently have in my house that would work for this? And then you can look through those and decide, mm, yeah, I don't think I like any of those for this pattern. I'm going to go buy yarn. Or you can say, I totally forgot that I had that one skein right there that would be perfect for this, and I'm going to go ahead and use that. The other thing is if you're not sure what to do with a particular yarn, you can click on the yarn and then click on the manufacturer, or over here you can click on it. And right here they have the, the projects that people have made with this yarn. So it kind of gives you ideas. Up here it's got pattern ideas. Let's see what they suggest for Knit Picks gloss fingering. So the funny thing is, is looking at this pattern ideas, all of these things that are here are patterns that I currently have listed in my notebook section as a favorite, as is in my queue, or is currently in my library. So Ravelry knows what I have and says, oh, you liked this pattern. Here, you can knit that using this yarn. They also have up here is the, the projects. So you can see what other people have knit using this project. And you can scroll down and get pattern ideas or project ideas from what other people on Ravelry have done with this exact yarn. So if you, ever have that one single skein and you're not sure what to do with, Ravelry can help you out. The next section in the My Notebook is your queue. And honestly, I use the queue and the favorites sections kind of interchangeably. That um, the queue lets you add in additional information, like you can say, oh, I want to knit this, I have this, I'm going to use this yarn, and I have these needles and set it all up so that it's ready to go. Or you can just favorite it and look at it like nice big pictures, which I tend to do. The nice thing about the favorites is that you can favorite a pattern or you can favorite somebody's individual project of a pattern. So if you see another person on Ravelry has used a really gorgeous colorway, for a particular pattern and you just love what they did with it, you can favorite their project and save it in your favorite section so that you have a reminder of that colorway in case you, maybe you want to knit that pattern in that colorway instead of the one that's shown in the original pattern. So both the favorites and the queue is kind of a way to, to bookmark or save individual patterns or projects so that you can find them again later. I like this better than pinning them on Pinterest or something like that because this goes directly to the patterns um, page here on Ravelry where you can click to purchase it right here or up here. You can send it to somebody else as a gift. You can save it for later, but I like this better than on Ravel or than pinning things on Pinterest 
for the reason of it is immediate it is an immediate click to being able to get that pattern as opposed to or if you've already purchased it it's an immediate click to the pattern as opposed to pinterest you never know where there's links are going to take you so i tend to if i find something on pinterest that i like i tend to come find it here on ravelry and save it into my my favorite section here as opposed to um just leaving it pinned in pinterest it's my own personal preference you have a friends section because just like any other social network you know that ravelry is its own little social community and so you can have friends and you can have groups and events and all sorts of wonderful things here in ravelry now this needles and hooks section is pretty much like the stash section where you can keep track of the needles and hooks that you have i admit that you know you can see mine is blank that i have not actually filled anything in here because I've been using interchangeable knitting needles for so long that I've never worried about whether or not I have the appropriate needle for the project that I need. I, I know that I have it because I've got the whole set. However, if you've got a large collection of straights or circular needles in various different lengths and um, or sock needles or double pointed needles or things like that, and you're you're never quite sure which ones you have, then this might come in useful for you and you might want to go ahead and fill that out. This is my other favorite section of Ravelry. So unlike the favorites and the cues, which is pretty much things that you have liked, not necessarily things that you have purchased, etc. It's kind of browsing and window shopping. The My Library section are things that you have actually purchased or downloaded, etc. But it's not just things that you have purchased here on Ravelry. That you can add in things to your library, like a book that you bought at the bookstore that had a, a book of patterns or a stitch library, or that little leaflet that you picked up at the yarn store from, for that yarn company that had that really pretty scarf. You can enter that into here in your library. Or the magazine, if you got the newest knit scene or handwoven magazine, you can input that in here too. And Ravelry has already indexed the patterns that are in that booklet. Almost everything in the last 10 years at least has been, as, as it comes out, it becomes indexed and is now in here. Um, older things you may have to you may have to choose to contribute or help out the algorithm by telling them what's in it. But anything, at least within the last decade or so, is going to already be indexed in here. So once you put in that I have interweave from April 2018 and you put it in here, it will automatically know that you have all of those patterns that are contained in that magazine and it becomes searchable for you as things that are on your bookshelf in your home. So if you want to sit down and knit today and you already have a large library of patterns, you can search and filter through the things that you already have and Ravelry will tell you what you can knit with patterns that you already have, just like it did with yarns that you already have. And of course, down here, you've got all of your filter filter options because Ravelry is amazing at that. You could see the patterns that you have purchased. You could see the magazines that you have inputted in here. You can say, I want to knit a scarf. So click on accessories and it will show you all of the scarves that you have in your library. Your library is full of all the things in your physical books, in your physical magazines, as well as any patterns that you have purchased on Ravelry and any free patterns that you have choose, chosen to download, you can also add to your library. So if you printed off a pattern two years ago and you knit a hat that you absolutely loved, but you can't remember what it was and you've lost the physical copy, you can come to your library here, find it again, click on the link, and download it again. Easy peasy. Everything is organized and nothing will ever be lost ever, ever again, which it makes my kind of type A heart flutter a little bit. It makes me so happy. <laughs> 
Down farther, you've got your messages in case somebody sends you a private message and your contributions. In, if you have added a pattern to Ravelry, whether because you are a designer or because you have a little leaflet and it's not currently in the database and you told Ravelry, oh, I have this leaflet by Lion Brand and this is the pattern that was in it. Then Ravelry now says, oh, well, you're the contributor for that one. We know who, who to go to. Down here at the bottom, additionally, you can see all of the patterns that you have purchased and keep track of them. If there is a pattern that has an update or if you need to download it again, it's always, always here, which is wonderful. You'll notice in my notebook section that I've got two additional buttons here, and that's because I I too sell things on Ravelry. I'm a pattern designer and I'm a yarn designer. So I have a section for my designs that I have designed. You do not need to be some famous person who has, um, who has contributed to interweave knits or to some anthology or something like that. You can offer a free pattern on Ravelry any time that you would like to. In fact, my first pattern that I contributed were these little heel flap socks years and years ago on a personal blog that I had when I had tiny little people living in my house who are now big teenage people. But there are hundreds and thousands of patterns, either paid patterns or free patterns that are contributed by members of Ravelry, just like you and just like me, right? The yarn section is if you are a yarn designer, a dyer or a, um, a spinner, and you have yarns that are, you are selling to other people that you would like them to be able to select when they when they're knitting a pattern to say, I knit that in Dawn's Cotton Sport, then you can enter your yarns in here in this section so that other people can link to it, which is a kind of a nice feature. Plus it lets people see you as a person and as a, as a yarn designer and a business and will help spread the word. All right, that is the notebook section of Ravelry. I was gonna show you this on a dummy web, on a dummy account. However, you'll see that this is actually me. Anytime you see this name, Neritsuki, that's me. It's kind of a long story how I came up with that and maybe for another time, but just know anytime that you happen to see that username, it's me, Dawn Prickett. I chose to show you my personal profile because I wanted you to be able to see what it looked like when it had things in it so that we could click and we could see all the different functions and the things that you can do in it. And just know I didn't even go over probably a quarter of the various buttons and things that you can click in the different areas. So feel free to come in here in your notebook and maybe add a project or two that you have done recently. I would suggest that you go ahead and if you can, add some things to your stash and add some things to your library because it'll be helpful to see those things in here when we come over tomorrow and look at the patterns. And with that, I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.